Last week, we announced our new partnership with Alex Seal Paints and our eventual intentions to paint our halls with one of their beautiful topside paint colors. Until we get to that phase though, we were able to use their finished primer in our master head, spraying on a fine white coat of paint and getting an idea of what the space will look like when it's finished. Next day and getting ready to sand and uh, figure out how everything went besides the runs, which again, that's just a learning thing with us, uh, trying to figure that out. Just going through and gonna mark the areas that I see that there's some imperfections. Little things like, you probably see right here, that little angle needs to be adjusted, uh, filled in there. Same thing over on this side. And right down here, that isn't coming in right. So I need to get that. This side's a bit better, but it could be softened a bit. In here, there's a little bit of shadow right in there that needs to get adjusted. But the rest of it, I think, looks really good. Happy with how the rest of this has turned out. So that's going to be the extent of my time right now is marking these things, um, the little intersections. Again, this line is where we're still having some problems. It's still soft not coming through real sharp. And then up here, there's kind of a drop in it. I've tried filling it in and going at it, but it's it's gonna need more work. That's, that's probably been the most frustrating thing is this damn line here. I can't build it out far enough to be able to ferret back in without changing everything else in here kind of should have attacked it a little bit different. Our problem was is we didn't want to put on a ton of fairing compound. We wanted to try to keep it as light as possible. And in doing so, it has made it almost impossible to get this line right. Because as soon as I start sanding down this upper area to get it to blend in here, I, I hit fiberglass. Same thing with the lower area leading up to it. So what really needed to have been done was to build up this quite a bit more and then fare down from it, fare out from it. It's been a bit of a, a, a bastard here. Yeah, everything else I'm, I'm happy with, how everything else has turned out in the areas that I can see so far. I'm gonna put that dicum on all of these surfaces, go through and sand it. I'm gonna start off with 180 grit uh, and just see how it all looks, but quite frankly, I really don't care what it shows me at this point. Uh, even if the dicum is showing some little low spots in there, I'm not seeing it at all with this lighting and we'll get more lights in here too and we'll just shine it from the side to see if there's anything that's gonna show up once we do get sunlight in here. But I really don't think there's, there's anything else that we need to really worry about within, especially within these big panels here. This is a semi-gloss almost what we're gonna do for the rest of the areas. The only area that's gonna be high gloss is where I'm standing in right now, the bathroom. The head shower specifically is gonna be high gloss. We're still not 100% sure, but I think the whole entire bathroom is gonna be high gloss just to make it an easy clean surface. But beyond that, everything else is gonna be a semi gloss, so that will hide some of the sins as well. But besides that little run right there, actually big, big run right there, uh, I think this turned out nice. It looks like it's blended in well. And then we do have this little area it needs to get addressed again. This will be covered by the door trim coming around here, but you're still going to see that. So that needs to get filled in. And then we will have the doors overlapping this. So this will be covered as will on that side. Now just a lot of sanding in my future. Uh, it's gonna be a tough day, but I am gonna use that new, the flexi sander and take away a lot of that long boarding, the hard stuff for me. But the thing still does weigh seven pounds, so it is heavy, but uh, it's still a lot easier than just long boarding it.
when I'm sanding with the Dicom on there, it's very hard to see actually where that line is, and I want to make sure that I don't run against it or, or on top of it. So let's put a quick mark, quick mark there. Um, then I'll put the Dicom on, and that should give me hopefully a guide so I don't disrupt that even more than it already is. Now that Matt has used our flexi sander to sand the master head, we are so close to being able to get the next coat of finished primer on and then the final coat of paint, which we've decided we're going to go with a high gloss in here. I think the color is cloud white, but there's just little touches that still need to be fixed up, namely this line here. So after the entire surface got sanded, I have been focusing on the coves, which are looking really good, just minor touch-ups that I'm able to use that Alex Seal Fine Filler on. And what Matt has been doing is just going back and forth over this line, but what we've noticed is even after we add the fairing compound and sand it down, it's hard to tell how it's going to come out, just especially because the variance of colors with the white primer and the green filler. So what we have started doing now is that we have only been priming the line once we feel like we've gotten it as close as we can with the fairing compound. Put that primer on, it gives us a good idea of any high spots, low spots. So instead of just doing it in the head now, Matt has been working the line on both sides of the boat, on both hulls. So I have got three coats of our fine filler primer on those. And while I was at it, I mixed up way too much. Again, forgetting how fine it is and how lightly it goes on. So I have also painted the fronts of our staircases going down into the port side of the boat. So we will continue to do things like that, but pretty soon, I think in the, like the next month to six weeks, we'll probably have paint on here. Can call this one finished and then can start the actual plumbing and other more exciting things. Since we're spending so much time working on the inside trim, I want to make sure that we're going to get this nice and even. So today I'm going to cut this section out, do just kind of a rough cut, but it's going to give me a good idea then as to where everything's going to lie to make sure that that trim around there is all going to be, let's say, two inches or whatever it ends up being, um, that it's nice and even in there. It isn't going to be a jagged cut. So just to do the first level of it, I'm going to just use this as a guide find my area here. Uh, probably should have wiped the surface down first because that is hard to see. Other side. <laughs> So I'll end up cutting this out to the inside of this and then run around it with a router which will then clean up that edge for us, use this guide for it when it comes time to that. But I don't want to actually use the router to cut this because it is difficult to do and with fiberglass it ends up burning through my router bits really really fast. So I'll rough cut it first then come back at it with the uh, router and clean it up and then kind of pull from there.
this is why I cut this out right now. If you look here, this edge roughly puts it at 45 millimeters. Here, it's 45 millimeters. This ledge, edge is straight. Up here though, on the other hand, it is 48 and a half. You can see there's a bit of a gap there from where it is. This is uneven around here, so I'll trim that up. Where the glass goes on the outside, you really can't see where the window trim is. So I can clean this up, raise this just a little bit, cut just a little bit of this off and keep that nice and smooth. And then same thing with this. This is about, over the course of it, is about a half an inch difference from here to here. This is on a, but on a bit of an angle there. So really it needs to be strained up and cleaned up there. So I'll do that same thing. So then this is a nice edge here. Uh, so everything is nice and square. Um, but at least now I know what that's gonna be. And I know I can clean up these edges before we end up painting this, because that's gonna be the problem. My fear was we'd get to that paint stage then I would do this, and during that process, chip up this edge and all that kind of stuff. So right now I wanted to handle that, do the same thing over on the other side to make sure that I don't do that, and then we're good to go. This past fall, with the last little bits of warmth, we were able to finally bond down our cabin top, which originally had arrived to us in three separate sections. While temperatures were still above 60 degrees, we used our methacrylate bonding agent to glue it to the flanges of the cabin sides. Now that we're headed into spring and are once again experiencing the odd warm day here and there, it's time to glass the two pieces together on the exterior. Before we can get any glass on this area, of course, Matt has to do the cove, which we're using our Total Boat Structural Putty. And because we're Still in the upper 50s right now, heading 60. We want to give this as much time as possible to start tacking off before we can glass. It is like spring out. It feels so gorgeous. I cannot believe it's still February. I know. I did not think we'd be tackling exterior work at this time. No, not for another two months. <laughs> uh, I do need a spatula or a... Uh... Squeegee? Squeegee, please. It's a pretty narrow uh, area to try and work and not fall off. <laughs> and now we're just cleaning up the excess, keeping a smooth surface for when we eventually um, just kind of get some flat black paint on the surface later and then get the glass or acrylic on. So this underside area is eventually going to need to be fared um, slightly and then we'll uh, spray gel coat in here as well to kind of just finish it off. So in case anyone peers underneath, it doesn't look too terrible. It's actually not that bad of a surface though. No. Won't need much work. hours to get tacky, it was time to apply our 12 ounce double bias fiberglass. Because of the extreme pressures we expect this cabin top to handle, two layers would be used, each one slightly overlapping the other to help spread the load. And because this is a space we're finishing out to a smooth surface, peel ply is added on top of the fiberglass. Good. <laughs> How much was that again? <laughs> There we go. Sorry about 
stagger the joint. After all of the exterior of the cabin top has been glassed, I went through the next day after it had cured and I started to do the fairing on the underside of at least the cabin front because that's the area that it's tightest and hardest to get into. We can't really fit our tools in there so I tried to just use a tongue depressor to kind of get a cove going. I know it's going to have to be worked on and shaped a lot and then just bringing our Total Boat polyester fairing compound all the way to the forward edge. So it has a long way to go, but it was a nice day and I thought it would be something worth working on. Eventually we'll have to go all the way around and I'm starting to realize that it's gonna have to be done sooner rather than later because our hope is that by mid to late summer we'll be coming outside of the tent and going into the workyard, which means that these areas have to be fully closed up. The acrylic or glass, whatever we go with, will have to be on. So the exterior, the top sides here are gonna have to be fared the surface will be painted a flat black and we'll have to get the glass on. So I'm starting to think that with some of my free time and when the days are nice, that is where you'll find me a majority of the time. Make sure to stay tuned to the next episode release because we are back in Vietnam. You see Matt's having his breakfast over there waiting for me, but we get to go to the Max Cruise factory to take the first looks at their new 48 and 55 foot catamarans. And tomorrow we're actually hopping on a plane to go to Bangkok and spend a few days sailing Terry's boat, Max One, which is a 44 foot Max Cruise catamaran in Thailand and open waters. So we got a lot of exciting things to come up and share with you. So make sure to stay tuned for that. Japan.